Today we're going to be talking about how to optimize modularization in facilities engineering. We like to start off all discussions with a safety moment. Today's safety moment is how to reduce height, uh, work at height. And our innovation to solve this problem is our pipe rack loop modules. In the picture, you can see the scaffolding uh, required to get at these uh, loops for welding. In our design, we've been able to modularize these loops and just have flange connections in strategic locations to minimize the work at height. Through the industry, we've heard a lot of problems about modularization, such as um, too much steel, too costly, and schedules being missed. And we feel this is due to poor planning. As you can see, we say no to empty modules, and we're able to do this through proper planning. Through today's discussion, we're going to talk about how Vista plans modularization, our modeling process through modularization, opportunities through modularization, and how we're able to report our modules to the clients. A little bit about Vista Projects. Vista Projects is a fully integrated engineering and procurement firm. We specialize in cost-effective facility design for large-scale and industrial projects. Vista is a mid-sized organization that is large enough to handle any project and flexible enough to accommodate any unique client's request. Focused on technology and process efficiency, Vista is a leader in using the data-centric approach in facility engineering. We have gained significant modularization experience working on large-scale central processing facilities over the years. A little bit about myself, I've worked with Vista Project for 15 years. I've worked as a modularization specialist on numerous oil and gas facilities. Today I'm going to share with you what I've learned over the years and some of the opportunities we've discovered. Planning. Planning is the most important part to modularization. First thing we look at is location of facility. How close are we to uh, module fabrication yards and a workforce? From there, we look at completing a transportation study. With that study, we look at where we're fabricating modules all the way to the facility. In the process, we look at every road, bridge crossing, river crossing, and power line crossing along the way to avoid any issue and extra cost to the clients. While we're planning, the PFDs are being developed from the process department. Plot plan will then start once PFDs are, are given to us. We, we pull the information from the PFDs, we develop a plot plan. From there, before we start modeling, we start running lines in a transposition. This is done to show the length of lines and it allows us to plan pre preliminary loop locations. This is super important in, in designing an efficient modularized plant, especially with our loop modules. Um, strategic locations are placed based on the equipment locations and they're identified in green on the plot plan here. From there, we develop area key plans. Area key plans are designed to work with the PNIDs and process areas and common equipment. Inside each area, we then break it into module key plans. Module key plans are designed to create buckets for our materials instrumentation and equipment. This allows us to track every piece to that module. Each piece inside that module is tagged directly to that module so it doesn't get lost in the MTO. Okay, once our module key plans are complete, we then look for opportunities to accelerate modules. Vista likes to choose pipe racks to accelerate and exchangers and simple equipment. The reason Vista likes to accelerate pipe rack modules is because we do not put instrumentation in, in modules and it's just running pipe throughout the plant. We can deliver on these quickly and effectively in the project to get the construction going. Modeling and model development. Model development does not start till we have the area key plans and the module key plans complete. From there, each discipline's given their hierarchy and all modeling will take place in there based on the area number and the module number. And the modeling takes place as a multi-discipline tool. Through proper planning, Vista has identified opportunities to optimize modularization. 
We look to avoid shipping empty modules. We've implemented pipe rack loops modules into the design. We've optimized our buildings, reducing height and shrinking footprint. We've lowered our pipe racks, and we've added work platforms to our modules to help with bolt-up. As you can see with this chart, too little modularization, costs go up. We want to hit this nice sweet spot, and as you can see, if we over-modularize, costs go through the roof. Vista believes in the right amount of modularization, fit for purpose for the job. Say no to empty modules. Vista believes our planning allows us to prevent this from happening. Um, we look at ways to reduce quantity, reduce cost and lower height, but add a compressed design to the plant. Now I'm going to go through some detailed examples about how we've been able to improve our modularization in our plants. This is an example of, of our expansion loop modules. Past designs have had a, had a main rack module. You can see that we had a number of field welds located between the modules. We also have field erected structures supporting field pieces of the expansion loop. And you can imagine through that picture we saw earlier the amount of scaffolding that's required to get at these field welds. This design has allowed us through our planning to be able to compress the design, strategically locate our loops, and eliminate all the field welding required in these modules. Here's an example of a field erected building. You can see a large building with a high eave. You see a canopy over the equipment and, and modules to the side of the equipment. In our new design, We've modularized the building. This has allowed us to take concrete floors that were in the previous building, instead turning it into steel skids. We have steel floors and concrete is only used where required. We've been able to reduce the height significantly. The height of the field erected building is substantial compared to the modular building. This allows us to reduce the amount of field quantity required in this particular area. VISA's approach is moving to more smaller, modularized buildings. We do studies on equipment to determine which equipment needs to be inside a building and which equipment can be outside of the building. Pipe rack modules. In the past design, we've had field, we've had field installed stick-built legs. Um, this has been done to allow traffic to travel under the pipe racks. In VISA's design, we've lowered the pipe racks to just head height, and we've removed the stick-built component of the legs. We've built them into the modules. In the past, we've used concrete foundations. In VISTA's design, we are going with a steel pile with a cap. In the past, the lower tiers of modules have not been fully loaded. In VISTA's design, we make sure we utilize the lowest levels to eliminate, again, height of our plants. Glycol tracing stations in the past have also been field installed. This creates a huge amount of work at site to be able to hook these stations up. In VISTA's designs, we have the tracing trees installed in the mod yard. Insulation and tracing, we include the tracing trees on the module. This allows us to fully insulate and deliver these modules fully tested to site. Again, saving time at site. Between our pipe rack modules, we have installed platforms to allow for bolt-up of our modules. In the past, we've had to scaffold to get up to all the bolted connections on the modules. Vista's innovation is to pre-install access work platforms on the modules. This allows us to reduce field work and improve the amount of time it takes to bolt these modules up at site. This then leads into redu reduction of cost, and it also helps us minimize the amount of shipping steel required to support the lines while they're being transported. We move into our exchanger module design. We are looking to eliminate field work and minimize bolt-up. Design lightweight modules, design stress loads into the exchanger design to eliminate expansion loops on the pipe racks, and compress the design to reduce plot space. 
here's an example of a model and the exchanger being built at a mod yard. In this picture, we're showing how compressed our exchanger design is. We've also modularized the PSP platforms on the top of the exchangers. We've added grading between the modules in these areas to join the, the modules together and handrails will be connected from there. This is another shot. We're showing the glycol tracing trees at the top of the modules. This allows us to have these modules fully traced and insulated when they're delivered to site. We've also added cable trays on the outside edge of the module with access platforms to allow for ease for cable pulling to these modules. We also have flange connections strategically located on these modules to allow for bolt up from grade and from these access platforms at the top. In this picture, we're demonstrating how our equipment modules bolt up directly to the pipe rack modules. And we've also created a corridor between the modules to allow for bolt up to happen from a man lift from grade. Module reporting. Let's look at how we report our modules to our clients using our digital project hub. This is our technical directory. From here, we're able to access um, our area package, our module key plans, our mechanical equipment lists, our LDTs, all instrumentation, manual valves, SP items, our MTOs, our equipment lists, and then our comparison reports. This is an example of our skid list from our technical project directory. This is a live list that allows us to click on each skid or module to allow us to pull further information. We provide descriptions to all the modules, so it's an easy correlation between the number and the module. Here's an example of some information that, you, that gets pulled from that list. We got skid number, area numbers, um, the process description of the module, and skid category. It also tells you how many bays we have, the skid length, width, and weight. From that report, we're also able to pull an MTO. The MTOs are called out by line number, area package, skid site zone. It also tells you the sizes and descriptions of pipe. The final output is a skid isometric view. In the skid isometric view, it allows us to pull off an equipment list and it provides a module weight and a transportation type. Also a location in the plant. This allows us to work with the mod yards and shippers to coordinate the delivery of these modules. This is a live chart that helps us track the shipping weights of each module. The upper chart identifies each discipline, whether it's equipment, electrical, grading, handrail, ladder weights, mechanical equipment, piping, and instrumentation. The bottom chart is a skid weight, all combined, showing the overall weight. It's an early detection to allow us to identify modules that are overweight and could cause problems uh, with shipping. Thank you for listening to how Vista opt optimizes modular design. Thank you.